Passwords are among the most common targets of hackers simply because password hacking is among the easiest tricks to pull off. While most people think that creating longer passphrases are hard to crack, hackers are aware that most people typically neglect to protect their user credentials. Password cracking is the process of recovering passwords from data that has been stored in or transmitted by a computer system. A common approach is to repeatedly try guesses for the password. Passwords are the most widely used form of authentication throughout the world. A username and password are used on computer systems, bank accounts, ATMs, and more. The ability to crack passwords is an essential skill to both the hacker and the forensic investigator, the latter needing to hack passwords for accessing the suspect's system, hard drive, email account, etc. There are many ways to hack passwords, including the methods described in the following sections. The first is guessing password. Just like in the movies, hackers can simply guess a person's password. If the password is simple and the hacker knows something about the person, they can try guessing a password based on the person's interests. It's well known that users often create passwords named after themselves, loved ones, or their favorite hobbies. The hacker can manually try to guess a person's password at a logon screen or use one of the many hacker tools for automating password guessing. If the automated password guesser blindly tries every possible password combination, it is known as a brute force guessing attack. If it uses a predefined set of possible password values, which is often a dictionary of words, then the password guessing tool is known as a dictionary password guessing attack. Most password guessers use a tool that begins with a dictionary set of words that then supplements the plain text words with different combinations of numbers and special characters to guess at more complex passwords. The second is phishing. The hacker can also use a realistic looking, but fraudulent, online request via website or email to trick the user into revealing their password. This is known as phishing. If the phishing attempt uses what was previously private or internal information, it's known as spear phishing. Hackers can also use a phone or show up in person to attempt to trick users out of their passwords. It works far more often than you would think. One of the most widely used attacks in the last five years. A mock-up site is created, and users are convinced to access it rather than the original site. The user then logins to the mock-up site, thus providing the username and password to the attacker. The third is keylogging. If the hacker already has elevated access to the victim's computer, they can install a program called a keylogger, which captures typed keystrokes. Keyloggers are great for capturing passwords, and they don't care if the password is long or complex. Keylogging, one of the unsafe malwares, is the movement of recording the keys struck on a console with the end goal that the individual utilizing the console is obscure about the way that their activities are being watched. It has legitimate use in examination of human PC collaboration and is considered as the primary danger for business and individual exercises. It tends to be utilized to catch passwords and other secret data entered by means of the console. Subsequently, counteraction of key logging is significant and severe validation is needed for it. Planning of secure confirmation conventions is very testing taking into account that different sorts of root units dwell in personal computers to watch clients' conduct. There are different keylogging procedures, stretching out from equipment and programming-based techniques to acoustic assessment. Human contribution in confirmation conventions, however ensuring, isn't straightforward. The fourth is Dictionary Attack. The dictionary attack is a slightly more sophisticated example of a brute force attack. This uses an automated process of feeding a list of commonly used passwords and phrases into a computer system until something fits. Most dictionaries will be made up of credentials gained from previous hacks, although they will also contain the most common passwords and word combinations. This technique takes advantage of the fact that many people will use memorable phrases as passwords, which are usually whole words stuck together. This is largely the reason why systems will urge the use of multiple character types when creating a password. The fifth is Rainbow Table Attack 
Whenever a password is stored on a system, it's typically encrypted using a hash or a cryptographic alias, making it impossible to determine the original password without the corresponding hash. In order to bypass this, hackers maintain and share directories that record passwords and their corresponding hashes, often built from previous hacks, reducing the time it takes to break into a system. Rainbow tables go one step further, as rather than simply providing a password and its hash, these store a pre-compiled list of all possible plain text versions of encrypted passwords based on a hash algorithm. Hackers are then able to compare these listings with any encrypted passwords they discover in a company's system. Much of the computation is done before the attack takes place, making it far easier and quicker to launch an attack, compared to other methods. The downside for cyber criminals is that the sheer volume of possible combinations means rainbow tables can be enormous, often hundreds of gigabytes in size. The last or sixth is Brute Force Attacks. Brute force attacks refer to a number of different methods of hacking that all involve guessing passwords in order to access a system. A simple example of a brute force attack would be a hacker simply guessing a person's password based on relevant clues. However, they can be more sophisticated than that. Credential recycling, for example, relies on the fact that many people reuse their passwords, some of which will have been exposed by previous data breaches. Reverse brute force attacks involve hackers taking some of the most commonly used passwords and attempting to guess associated usernames. Thanks for watching this article so far. If you like these videos then please share them with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. If you have any questions or feedback then please drop a comment. And which is best for you, drop on the comment. Thank you for subscribing.